From the American College of Cardiology, this is Dharam Kumbani from UT Southwestern in Dallas, Texas, the clinical trials lead for ACC.org. Today, we'll be covering the Tuesday, October 24th trials from this year's TCT conference in San Francisco. We've picked two landmark trials to talk to you about today, and I'm delighted to be joined by two clinical trial experts, Dr. Key Park from University of Florida, Gainesville, and Dr. Ajay Kirtane from Columbia University in New York, who is also one of the core program directors for this meeting. Welcome to you both, and thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So we'll start with the, with the PARTNER 3 trial, which compared um, TAVR to SAVR among low surgical risk patients. And there were two presentations from this trial today, um, the five-year clinical results by Dr. Leon and the five-year echo results by Dr. Han. Um, Ajay, give us your thoughts about this trial and the two presentations. Sure. And uh, just as a point of reference, um, I am at Columbia with uh, Dr. Leon and Dr. Hahn, but I was not involved in the study, but I just wanted to disclose that. Um, this was a super important presentation. The key issue here is in lower risk patients, and those were the ones studied in partner three. Um, the question of was valve durability um, equivalent to surgery superior, not inferior, not inferior or worse, is one that's super important and also uh, touching on clinical endpoints as well. To recap everybody, for everybody, there's a thousand patients enrolled in this trial randomized to surgery with conventional SAVR and uh, transcatheter aortic valve replacement with the Sapien 3 valve. Um, most will recall that up front at one year, a composite endpoint of uh, death, uh, hospitalizations, and stroke was in favor of the TAVR group. But the question is, is was that durable over time? And these data, which were pre specified as an analysis in five years, do show that um, there were still uh, benefits noted with regards to that endpoint uh, over the follow-up time period uh, at five years. And so that's an important finding. Similarly, valve durability was very similar between both arms. There was, though, a little bit of an increase in uh, valve thrombosis that could successfully be treated with uh, the, the TAVR compared to SAVR. The final point that I think will probably generate some controversy is that the mortality curves um, started to converge over time and, in fact, separated um, to uh, start favoring surgery versus uh, versus TAVR. However, this is underpowered, and there was a detailed analysis that was done of the types of deaths involved in the trial. Um, when those analyses are looked at, I think one can largely appreciate this is a small number of events, and they largely included um, deaths such as traumatic head injuries from falls, uh, cancer death, sepsis, and beyond. And so clearly when looking at cardiovascular death, there did not appear to be an adverse signal. These patients will be followed up, though, to 10, um, 10 years, and so it's going to be super important to determine what happens with those patients over time. Thank you, Ajay. Yeah, that's an excellent summary. And, uh, you know, as you mentioned, this is a very important trial. Um, you know, there are, you know, thousands of patients receiving um, TAVR preferentially compared with um, SAVR now. And uh, as you mentioned, I think the investigators have tried to be very transparent about sort of this, um, this uh, unexpected, if you will, finding of you know, maybe the mortality curves uh, flipping around three years, as you pointed out. Um, it was reassuring to note that CV mortality was, you know, remained similar, um, you know, which was about 1% a year. And the majority of the hazard um, for both therapies was up, you know, within the first 30 days. And after that, it's kind of, you know, the curves appear to be fairly parallel. Um, I think Becky Ahn um, also presented some of the echo data. And as you pointed out, um, you know, the, the, the durability appears to be really good. Um, the valve hemodynamics appears to be very good. Um, there were some sort of, uh, you know, interesting indices that were studied, such as the stroke volume index, um, which was uh, higher with TAVR. Um, TAPSI, uh, which is frequently used as a measure of RV function, was also higher with TAVR. Um, and the ZVA, which is a measure of the valve arterial impedance, uh, was lower um, among TAVR patients. And, you know, so these are very interesting findings, and they have done some very... Um, uh, intelligent analyses trying to understand if any of these may be associated with worse clinical outcomes. And as you pointed out, you know, this is sort of perhaps the midway point. We still need to get to 10 years in the, uh, for the follow-up, uh, and we'll kind of see what the long-term data show. So, uh, yeah, really, really important study, and sort of a great segue for the second trial, which is also a landmark trial, the Evolute Low Risk Trial. Um, and we saw today the presentation of the four-year results by Dr. Reardon. Um, can you tell us your thoughts about this trial? Yeah, thank you for the opportunity to speak on uh, these trials. So similarly to what was just discussed in terms of um, the shifting tab or landscape, I think we're seeing more and more low-risk younger patients coming into our practices. So this data is really 
you know, emerging is very clinically important what we're doing in our daily practices. Um, you know, the evolution these studies have discussed in um, many iterations over each year's uh, major scientific sessions, but just as a reminder, this was looking at the Evolute platform in patients who are randomized one-to-one -one in surgery versus TAVR. Um, at four years, they found that there was um, a significant uh, a difference in mean gradients with lower mean gradients in the Evolute valve and also decreased rates of uh, patient prosthesis mismatch in uh, the Evolute patients, as well as a significant reduction in um, overall all-cause all mortality and disabling stroke. Um, and these differences continue to um, persist and even slightly widen um, over uh, the course of four years. Um, the, this valve continues to be um, proven to be hemodynamically, um, uh, you know, well proven with increased o EROEs compared to surgical um, AVRs. Um, one note is that these patients, I think a concept that's important to um, keep in mind is that even though we're talking about low risk patients, um, these are not necessarily younger patients. 23% um, of the patients were um, under the age of 70. So the majority are still over the age of 70. Um, and as we've mentioned, we have a lot of durability um, data, but we still have more to go in terms of looking at five-year outcomes, 10-year outcomes. Um, so again, they're just sort of important to keep that uh, in mind. But similar, um, you know, strains of discussion um, as it was discussed with the um, Sapien platform as well. Wow. Thank you, Keith. That was uh, really insightful. And, and as you pointed out, I think you know, the, the, the valve appears to be functioning uh, really well at four years compared with SAVR. We'll have to see what the long-term data suggests. And although it is tempting, and I, I suggest will will happen, uh, you know, it, there is hazard in comparing TAVR valves across trials. And uh, and so, you know, I think, um, you know, that's something um, I think we need to keep in mind as well. Well, I want to thank both of you for sharing your insights on today's important trials at TCT in San Francisco. This is Dharam Kumbani for the ACC.org. Thank you so much for joining us.